The last request almost broke me. I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> Back in the end of 2005, the winds were changing and the sound of new metal was slowly starting to fade after certain, uh, groups. Who held the new metal banner started really showing they didn't have that much to offer. Other bands started coming out with a wide variety of styles and talent that would, after years, finally get a little bit of spotlight and start to get known. Then there was a band who had zero variety, style, or talent, and they got more airtime than Roman Reigns and John Cena on WWE television in the past decade. Hinder was all over the radio, and their live tour and album sales sold like crazy near the end of 2015 and the turn of the following year. Extreme Behavior, the debut album from Hinder, boasted four radio singles that were highlights of rock and pop stations, one of which singles was even the number one charted pop song in 2006. Did pop stations really have nothing better than Hinder in 2006? You had a bad day, you wow, pop stations really didn't have anything better in 2006. However, one of the purposes of this video is to show Hinder's influence in the rock world. Because when it comes down to it, this is a rock band. It's hard to deny. And on top of that, Hinder is a successful and high-selling rock band. How good were Hinder at selling albums? Well, this cheesy, corny, and laughably bad album from Hinder sold more copies than the Mars Volta's debut album, The Laust in the Comatorium, which was also their best-selling album. Oh, is that not shocking enough for you? Well, let me add to that. It sold more copies than the Mars Volta's entire discography. Excuse me for a moment. As years went on, Hinder have been exposed as not exactly being the staple and best representation of what the rock world has to offer. But one thing stayed consistent. They have a dedicated fan base. Many of you may be wondering who the heck still supports Hinder, and who did back then? Well, a lot of people do. They have a dedicated fan base, just like Buckcherry does. And it's the same fan base that supports Buckcherry that does Hinder. A fan base full of drunken moms. Really think about the fans of bands like Hinder and Buckcherry. It's the moms and dads who still think Kid Rock is awesome. Get their kids to do something out of the house on a Friday night, and then rock out to Hinder in the living room while drinking wine coolers. It's that type of rough and shocking rock that talks about bad relationships, but nothing too offensive or crazy that'll make you think too much. Oh, it also doesn't have any of that creativity or talent that'll make you think either. <laughs> no, not at all. So Extreme Behavior, released September 27, 2005, was what launched a career for a lucky band from Oklahoma. How does it hold up? Why did it sell so well? Is this album going to be as extreme as it claims? The answers to those questions are, no, it won't hold up. People bought it because it was constantly played on the radio. And... It's not gonna be that extreme. At all. So, let's go track by track and see why extreme behavior by Hinder is something worth regretting. Okay, this goes along with the strong bad rule. Just going, oh, does not count as legit lyric writing. The lyrics to the chorus say it all. It's an episode of Jerry Springer. Two rednecks in love with each other, and this is how they show affection. And it's not just the lyrics to this chorus either. The whole song is just embarrassing. I mean, come on, if you got in a car and saw someone singing the lyrics to this song, you'd dive out headfirst on the highway. Not to mention if it was your own cool mom or dad singing stuff like this. But apparently a lot of people liked it because this song, Get Stone, charted at number 4 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Chart, was listed as one of Billboard's top pop songs of the year, and it was listed as iTunes' free single of the week. You know how bakeries give away free donuts at the end of the night because they can't keep them, but they don't want them to go to waste? I feel like iTunes did that that week. They just had way too much music and they said, you know what? Just, just take it. We want someone to have it. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm going to say this a lot, but this is really bland. The lyrics are constantly repeated and it makes it feel like it was done to stretch out the track length. The guitar work is this boring chord progression that it's easy to pose with on stage while you barely play or move your hands. And there is really a minimal amount of effort in all of this. 
But because it talks about sex and drugs, it's extreme. Come on. That's terrible. That means all those edutainment groups that came into grade schools to talk about no sex and no drugs ever were triple X levels of extreme compared to this. Wait, what? It'll go away once you go to the hospital or the police, you moron! After hearing Get Stoned, this album really turns into something dark about another post-breakup song and a psycho ex-boyfriend. I swear with bands like Hinder and Nickelback, the easiest target is to sing about bad breakups. It's the instant generic lyric writing and it grabs the attention of an... uh... audience. Of people who love to sing along with that. So, I guess this song is for all those drunk moms who live for girls' nights and burn all their ex's stuff. But that doesn't make sense, this is from the guy's perspective. What is the appeal of this song and band? This song also charted as one of the album's singles, and I still don't get it. I mean there are basic strum along guitar riffs, basic rhythm drumming and bass, and the vocalist is extremely repetitive with lyrics and it sounds like he's just barking the vocals. The guitar solo ends on an odd note and chord change, almost like a string broke and he dropped down to continue it because they didn't want to spend another 5 minutes in the studio. These songs are the highlighted tracks from the album. They were played on hundreds of radio stations in the country and also throughout the world, as what Hinder has to offer. What am I missing? Okay. One, this is a really lame song with more breakup lyrics that sounds like it belongs in a bad 90s rom-com with the main characters can't quite seem to make it connect with each other. And two, I'm gonna play a little clip of this song and let's see if you can make out just what the underlying background line is that keeps getting repeated. Did you hear that? Well, let me flash the lyrics on screen so you can read it. What did I do to make a scene so gory? What the heck? That has nothing to do with anything! It's like they snuck in that line to make the song sound darker. Oh, sorry. More extreme! I mean, this song was already pretty generic and lighter than the other two, but throwing that line is that really makes no sense to the situation as it's a breakup song, not a domestic abuse brawl. It makes the band sound desperate, like they needed to sound more tough and edgy and that's all they could think of. I mean, come on, sneaking in a line about gore does not make a song better, especially some cheesy, crappy love song. If that were the case, Celine Dion would have done it years ago! And people still would have hated her. I'm really failing to see any appeal in this at all. What the heck? No! Oh! Just like the last track, the writing is generic. Very sophomoric, very first, second year of high school. And like other songs, it repeats the same lyrics many times over, but then throw in one line to make things get, uh... Ugh, calling it extreme now even feels wrong. Throwing in lines about gore or sexual acts does not make your song extreme. It makes it immature and desperate. That's what little kids do on the playground when the recess aides aren't in earshot. They just think it's funny and they say that stuff. And they get attention. That doesn't make it better, it makes it embarrassing and childish. <laughs> and these guys are millionaires! Oh. On top of all that, the guitar work, bass, and drums could be easily replicated by a first year student. It's the type of generic song you hear on the YouTube free use library of generic background tracks. Even my bass track called Tight Perm on YouTube's free use library has more of a hook and dynamic than this, and it doesn't even have vocals! This gets to the same point that I'm trying to make throughout this episode. What is Hinder's appeal? You can't say it was to get kids' attention just to throw in a bad word here or there. Kids knew where to find that, and it was done by other bands better. It doesn't appeal to the hard rock fan base, and even drunk moms and dads have to sober up and realize the music is lazy and it sounds like it came from a band who spent 20 years playing the same bar and grill stage. So why did this album sell so well outside of being constantly streamed on radio? Because it talks about bad relationship songs? 
because it throws in a shock line just to grab your attention for your naughty little fantasies and your dirty little kids who think profanity and gore is funny? I honestly don't get it. Please leave a comment on this video if you know who would be interested in Hinder. Those comments can be as serious or funny as you would like. I have a feeling I don't want to know either. It's another breakup song, and this time it includes talking about alcohol. That's really it. I mean, really, is the only topic these guys can sing about so far breaking up? I got a feeling this entire album is just the cathartic purge from five lonely guys who couldn't catch a break from the ladies. The line, I don't want to know, is repeated more than the lyrics in four minutes of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. There is a break for a 20 second guitar solo to prove that someone in the band is trying, but even then it doesn't add anything because it goes right back into the steady drum beat and lazy singing. It's boring, there's no replay value. But hey, unless I miss something, there's no creepy Denny Stalker level lyrics thrown in this song, so that's something. Wow, my bar is set really low for this album. This was the last of four radio singles to get airplay, and I guess would be the band's stripped out and more serious heartbreak song. I feel like this track is the closest to having depth and meaning in an album filled with forced emotions. It's all once again layered with a repeated phrase, this time it being, you deserve much better than me. It's another lost love ballad. It took a while for me to realize what Hinder is all about on this album, and especially what their style is, but I think I figured it out. They are a wannabe hair metal band, without the metal and swagger and stage presence and fun. Austin Winkler sounds like he's straining to get through every line, as if he was using every muscle in his body and all the air in his lungs to belt out every syllable, but it still comes off gruff and forced. The eventual buildup from the string section to a louder drum and guitar sequence doesn't add a punch as much as it adds a small nick for the song. Better Than Me is another bad relationship song. It's built up as this monumentous emotional experience. It's lazy, it's vague, it's meant to be that way to hook the listener into thinking their own thoughts. It's not good, it's lazy music writing, there's nothing about the music itself with the guitar and drums that offers anything. It's the With Arms Wide Open of the album. Not the With Arms Wide Open was a love song like this one. Ew. It definitely feels like there was more effort put into this track, and there was more thought in the words. But that's because the lyric writing in every other song was a bare bones minimum. Like in college, when you have a thousand word paper to write and you stop putting in effort after word 950, and just BS the remainder so you can say you're done. It goes back to my question of who would really like this in 2006. Yeah, I know it's a big deal when rock songs get played on the pop stations, but were you really that desperate for a rock song to get played on a pop station even though the rock is super bland and generic like this, and really poorly written? Wow. We really were that desperate for anything considered standard rock to be played in the popular eye. Oh my gosh. Just from the opening riffs I can tell this is gonna suck. <laughs> This song is embarrassing. <laughs> I'm ashamed to have this song on my computer now. I just have to flash these few lyrics on the screen to show the absolute garbage that Hinder is capable of exporting in a short amount of time. The guitar work is all dazzle and no real substance. It's a stupid story about another one night stand at a hotel or a bar or Denny's. You can tell that the band was having fun with a song like this, but the problem is that it's not creative and it offers nothing but weak shock value. It's not extreme. At all. If anything, it's middle school smut. The kind of talk young teenagers make fun of on the back of the bus, but in reality, they are just all talk and immature. They also included the following lyrics in this track. Come on guys, there's writing and then there's just making noises into a microphone. Write a song or don't! Oh please don't write a song. Well, here it is, the song from the band that really put them on the map. 
and it's a song about cheating on the person you're currently with and going back to your ex. I mean, the whole song is wrapped around that. Going back and making sure your current partner doesn't know how much you want to go back on that merry-go-round with your ex again. From a writing stance, the chorus feels stronger and a bit more fleshed out. Hinder must have thought so also because over half of the song is the chorus just being repeated. There really isn't much else to talk about. I mean, the slow guitar solo, again, doesn't add much at all. Austin Winkler sounds a little better too, but he also sounds like he's forcing himself to sing louder than he can go. But I don't need to really explain that, because if you listen to any genre of music back in that decade, you're familiar with this song, because you could not escape it. Lips of an Angel charted high on several US listens throughout the world. This single sold over 3 million copies alone. I can't believe I just had to say that sentence. Not too long after there was even a country cover of the song from Jack Ingram because he thought it was so good, it should be done with some twang. I really have nothing else to add for Lips of an Angel and everything considered about it. But now I have two questions for this episode. One, who would like Hinder besides the drunk mom and dad club? And two, who thought Lips of an Angel was this emotional, deep song? No joke, this song, Homecoming Queen, actually isn't bad. It actually feels like they put effort into it, and it tells a consistent story that doesn't creep you out. I mean, it's not good, but compared to everything else that's been played so far, it's great! It's an actual story format about the American dream girl not living up to everyone's expectations and how she wasted her life. When you compare this to every other song on the album about dirty sex, drugs, and a dozen past relationships, this song shines like a light of hope. And at least this song actually shares a little more than some scumbag rocker lifestyle and pandering to people who have had bad relationship experiences with vague stories about regret. This song is stretched out by more lyric repeating, but there is still undeniably more effort and time put into this track. Oddly enough, this was the fifth song to get radio play from Extreme Behavior, even though it wasn't even released as a single. Because FM Radio does not care about creativity or effort getting constant airplay. They want you to focus on someone shouting, Get Stoned, and a song about cheating on your girlfriend. And what better way to end an album about bad breakups called Extreme Behavior than with another bad breakup song. Okay, what the heck type of women are in Oklahoma who gave you guys such a hard time? Really? You have this many experiences to sing and play about? Don't get me wrong, this song actually has a little more volume in it. In fact, if anything, this track feels like it belongs more as a rock single than anything else I've heard. The guitars come in louder and it flows much better, but then it hits you. You just listen to an album called Extreme Behavior. Involved with extreme behavior is getting drunk because you are sad about past relationships, doing drugs with women because it makes the sex better, and then whatever the heck you want to call Room 21. This album is not extreme. At all. It's like false advertising for the title. I mean, really, junior high and grade school kids could write lyrics like this by just throwing in one shocking line and thinking it's good. It's not extreme, though. This album's about as extreme as nap time in kindergarten. Kinder is bland. Even at their best, which many of their fans claim is the 2010 release All American Nightmare, they still do not offer much at all. It's generic rock that isn't done particularly well, with songs about topics that are vague enough to people to latch onto. And it was after their 2012 release and a stint in rehab that singer Austin Winkler decided, with no animosity toward the band, that it was time to move away from them. Think about that. The lead singer of Hinder got tired of Hinder. That's pretty bad. In all honesty, this album really does reflect not only the band's talent, but what bad rock can be. Repeated themes and lyrics, no real passion for creativity, and throwing in profanity and dirty lines to get attention. If you like Hinder though, then like them. I honestly don't get the appeal at all outside of the drunk mom fanbase who lives for butt rock, but hey, that's just me. I love the Mars Volta and a lot of people don't get their appeal. The difference is I'm trying to at least explain why bad albums are worth regretting. And in the case of Hinder, we should regret buying into a band and supporting them just because they got a lot of radio play. Just because they got play the most does not make them good. There are a lot of other bands finally coming up at that time that didn't get much radio play but were miles better than this. And we really should look back on those and try to remember the past in fond ways instead of regretting the past with Hinder. In fact, there's an album that came out that same year in 2005 that I talk about with the Mars Volta's Francis the Mute. You can click on the YouTube card right here and...
Cause you had a bad day You take it one down You sing a sad song Just to turn it around Hey guys, thank you for watching. This video was a reward for a Patreon pledge, and if you'd like to support Rockta making more videos like this, you can check out the YouTube card or description link to help me on Patreon. Even a dollar a month helps out a ton. Please subscribe, it helps me out, and you'll be up to date on my album reviews. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Rockta Reviews, and you can see my less regretting the past on Good Charlotte by clicking the annotation here. God help you if you do.